Hello, this is Heon Lee. I'm very happy to be at this special meeting and also a special session alumni networking. It is quite important for people in ASEAN and also in Korea. I'd like to also give my special thanks to Professor Nam Jun Jo for inviting me to this very uh, wonderful special session. Uh, my, title, my title of the talk is Brain Mobility and Asia Research Network. I am currently professor, emeritus professor at Hanyang University, and also I'm the founder and president of Asian Research Network. Uh, also, I've been teaching and uh, doing some research at Tokens of Technology in Japan. Today's, my talk will be covering uh, several Agendas. First thing is ASEAN brief and connectivity. And also I will talk about innovation for shaping the bright future, including uh, fourth industrial revolution and UN SDGs. And the importance of industrial revolution innovation in Korea, especially in academia research institution and industry, I will also briefly talk about. And Asian Research Network, as a founder, as a uh, president, I will also talk about features, including talent mobility, SNT innovation, and looking for uh, global partnerships. Uh, I've been watching uh, today's online and offline meeting, and due to COVID 19's uh, pandemics, we have very limited offline audience. I wish sometime soon next year, maybe uh, situation getting better and people can go around again. And also we may do have some exchange programs or uh, many foreign student researcher in and out to Korea and also to, to other world. Uh, because the, this meeting is being held in Singapore, uh, I need to talk about a little bit about ASEAN communities. We are already physically, institutionally, we are well connected. And because of this ASEAN community uh, circumstance, many people, including researchers, they are going abroad like a brain, as a like a brain circulation uh, view viewpoint. So I will talk about later about brain mobility more in details. First of things I like to talk about ASEAN communities. As I said in the previous slide, people's mobility, and because of this community for ASEAN people, including a lot of uh, you know, potentially important person. Uh, in, in ASEAN country, and a lot of uh, tourists are coming. So we are also looking forward to having certain partnership with ASEAN communities. Already, uh, 2000, already ASEAN 50 has been proposed in 19, uh, 20, 2017, three years ago in Manila at 30th ASEAN summit. Uh, there are six thematic priorities related to ASEAN's main deliverable for 2017. Those are the following uh, agenda and the priorities. In Japan, uh, Japanese, prime, Japanese government, especially under the government, like JST uh, and MOFA, they are also doing uh, global and local uh, you know, relations with many different countries. You may see this international partnership by uh, Japanese government and institution, including a university and research institution. Now uh, we talk about uh, like a smart society. Uh, in Japan, like uh, 
smart society, smart society 5.0 that related to like a super that related to super smart society and including a certain goal for UN 17 SDGs. We are also we are in the era of the fourth industrial revolution. So shaping the bright future all relates to this uh, sustainable development goal and also many other uh, good you know agendas for shaping the future. Uh, from Professor Aizawa's uh, uh, Professor Aizawa, who was the president of Tokyo Tech, when he made a presentation in a 2015 Asian Estate Forum, he also talked about disruptive innovation rather than incremental innovation. So innovation include sustainable and uh, sustainable innovation and also uh, disruptive innovation. So we will talk about uh, this uh, uh, the topic later. Open knowledge platform scheme by the United States. Yes, uh, we are now talking about the knowledge platform, including me and you and audience. We are all the knowledge person who are assigned as a scientist or a normal person or a researcher or a policymaker or correspondent or whoever. We are talking about kind of open platform, whether open platform by uh, collaboration, whether through by funding or scientific coordination. So the UN's open knowledge platforms is key. You can see like there are three pillars, action, resolve, and identity. So those also has SDGs and post-2015 on the platforms. You are aware of UN's 17 SDGs. So many countries these days, they are, are doing something related to UN SDGs. Each country, including Korea, Japan, many countries, they are looking for international partnership as well as co-creations for achieving uh, SDGs. I think a fourth industrial revolution in these days also can have certain you know, important role to shape the future that at risk as it is. I'll just to talk about uh, briefly a uh, fourth industrial revolution. I think uh, from Davos, Davos Forum 2016, this uh, new uh, new world ha ha came out, and then uh, many countries they are doing uh, uh, many things, also make, making some programs for fourth industrial revolution for their own country or for certain regional you know, economic uh, market, uh, market uh, targeting. So industrial revolution driven by convergence of digital devices, human and physical environment, such as IoT big data and AI, etc. So impact before and after the fourth industrial revolution yeah, you can see on this slide, in the new era, the small but fast fish, for instance, if you think small fish and also fast fish, maybe small but fast fish eat big, but maybe small fish may not be. The Euro Innovation Startup and the small and medium and entrepreneur, in, 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 inter, entrepreneurship is also quite important both in uh, for the revolutions, industrial revolution. Uh, innovate uh, agenda, especially uh, each year, Bloomberg, they announced the ranking of each economics uh, for many years. Korea has been selected as the most innovative country for many, many years. This is in case of 2017, and Singapore following Korea as a sixth ranking. In, for, let's, for, let's have an example. In 2018, uh, Bloomberg Innovation Index, there are many parameters. Based on the many parameters, such as manufacturing value added, 
productivity, R&D intensity, many things. Then based on those evaluations in South Korea, the Korea became, again, number one ranking in 2018. Let me just have another slide for showing innovation, innovations and inspiration. You know very well about the Wright brothers who invented a flying object, airplane. Innovation actually came from inspiration and imagination, including a continuous experiment and that will be implemented from like a bicycle the chain, a Wright brothers, a Wright brothers after this, first, first things keep innovating then becoming like an airplane, uh, finally like a space shuttle. So continuous and disruptive innovations are quite necessary and also has to be uh, continued. Otherwise, once we stop it, maybe innovation may not be continuous. What about the Korea, even though Korea already ranked number one as the innovative country in the world many, many years, Korea, especially a uh, manufacturing country, Korea is one of big and uh, important manufacturing countries in the world. Uh, manufacturing innovation uh, is a Korea case 4.0, China case manufacturing 2025, a Germany case, Industry 4.0. So let me just uh, you know, show you another slide in terms of manufacturing and also uh, Korea economic growth. Korea's manufacturing has been a key factor as a main driver for realizing manufacturing of Korea and also for a smart industry. Some of the manufacturing share of GDP shared almost 30%. And what about the future? So like uh, in 2000, uh, like a present time around 2020, uh, in the previous slide, 30% of a sharing of a GDP. What about a future industry? Whether a smart industry? Yes, smart industry will be uh, very much expected for strong manufacturing capability of Korea in the future, smart era. So convergence ICT has, has to be well combined each other for having great impact on smart industry. Uh, let me take one example other than Korea let's say Singapore, this meeting is being held in Singapore. I like this slide, especially uh, the slide was, you know, pre slide was prepared by Professor White at uh, NTU. He was well invited speaker in 2017 at Asian Estate Forum. So I am from academia and uh, I've been talking about the uh, manufacturing, about the industry government like uh, sharing information and giving the, uh, the, the funding and also policies, those like a triangle or triple helix puzzle will be quite important for future, especially smart society. Now that I'm talking about the connectivity and also mobilities, uh, we are now working you are now watching my presentation on like a webinar and somebody basically somebody on online. Yeah, we are now uh, well connected either physically, either cyber, on cyber. So great connectivity. Why increase great connectivities? Uh, the slide was prepared by Professor Lam. Uh, Executive Vice President and Chief of Staff of NTU. He also came 2015 to Korea. Uh, he said, like this, global challenges require urgent solution and also great financial resources required toward large scale research. I hope this slide can give you some kind of insight for the future. 
relates to comic connectivity, brain mobility, brain circulation. Uh, because this is a scientific meeting, uh, I would like to say brain circulation in science, sometimes depending on brain drain. But uh, let's talk about more positively brain circulation. The mobility also equal to brain circulation. Mobility, there are, are several categories, either, uh, for instance, international mobility, intersectional mobility, interdisciplinary mobility, virtual mobilities. Uh, for academic mobility viewpoint, uh, Lausanne campus VPF in Switzerland, it is the worst, is the world's highest populated area for foreign researchers. Under the Erasmus program, which was uh, initiated and established in 1987, around more than 3 million students have benefited from Erasmus grant. Uh, in Asia, we have another uh, program, which is called Campus Asia Programs. Uh, before going to Campus Asia Program, just a one more slide about Erasmus Plus. Erasmus Plus uh, has been changed from Erasmus program by connecting, converging many different projects and those activities. So this is kind of multiplex mobility, not only for uh, researchers. Let me just uh, give you some slide uh, and idea about Campus Asia. So go global in, 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 in education, uh, from Asian countries, especially trilateral, China, Japan, Korea, the countries. The Collective Action for Mobility Program of University Student in Asia is a student exchange program funded by the government of Korea, China, and Japan, uh, especially for supporting university students for their expansion and go global for their, you know, another, you know, great view and uh, experience. So education, object of this Campus Asia program is to establish a higher educational network among uh, universities in three countries to improve competitiveness in the international academic market and to the nature and to nurture the development of future leaders who can succeed in global community. I think the audience, especially uh, researcher or students who educate in Korea is also part of a good examples. Again, continuously, uh, this Campus Asia program. So it is again, a cross border student mobility program among three countries. So mobilities, connectivity, I would say in different view, but uh, similar uh, visions, yes by a uh, quote by Hillary Clinton's message previously, so science, di science diplomacy and science technology cooperation is one of our most effective ways of influencing and assisting other nations and creating real bridges between the US and counterpart. In the same way, Korea, ASEAN country, or Singapore with a different neighboring economics, and many countries do the same things in, you know, in a view of science diplomacy. Okay, let me change my gear from previous overview and connectivity and also science diplomacy. All right, Asian Research Network also has quite a similar concept. The idea came 2003 when Korean government uh, wants to expand kind of the network globally. So luckily I was called by the ministry and then I contact Rikken Japanese Korean institution in 2003. And then we have been working together to make this come true. So the main concept it's like a small scale Erasmus or a small scale campus as a program. We do have a great student and, uh, you know, the researcher, why not hosting to this platform of 
Asian Research Network for securing talented researchers and then do the good things for establishing new uh, R&D platform in Asia. So the, the concept is especially air in Korea, ARN has many of uh, the regional uh, countries and uh, programs. ARN Korea is firstly founded as a legal entity in Korea and also representing ARN as a non-profit, a non-government, an international science organization as a legal entity since 2012. The four vision and missions are following networking, integrating Asian science and tech, building a, a forward-looking partnership through science diplomacy, develop Asian science and tech through corporate education, and the proceeding, a proceeding global competitiveness in age and ARN strategic programs. The activities are following uh, so far, promotion of trilateral cooperation programs, promoting and organizing STI forum, and also nano technology related to Asian conferences meeting, promotion of talent mobility, and also hosting air and summer school, also providing as science-based advice and consultation uh, for Asia development. For that, uh, in the beginning, uh, 2003, but actually designed by the Rikin and uh, Hanyang University for aiming the establishment a Asian Research Network. Uh, those are signed by uh, people in 2008. Let me just to show you more the expanded, you know, the content ever MOU. So the the MOU is for for the agreement on Asian Research Network. The Asian Research Network, the ARN, aims at the establishment of network which in with the re, re, reinvigorated research and education collaboration to solve the problems common to Asian country, such as decrease in the number of research like a brain drain uh, due to falling the falling uh, birth rate and the outflow of external research to Europe and America. I was also one of these examples uh, went to the US for my higher education. So the first stage of ARN was launched with the participation of Rikin, Hanyang University, Seoul National University, Postec, and others. So in the first of the ARN, the party have now agreed to open a laboratory of Rikin at the Fusion Tech Center in Hanyang University, especially it was 2008, uh, 12 years ago. The Rikin, probably many of you are aware of the like uh, name of Rikin. The Rikin is Japan's largest comprehensive uh, premier uh, research institution. In case of MOU, some examples, with the uh, Indian Institute of Technology, there are many in Chennai. So we have a great uh, agreement uh, with IITs. And in just uh, 2017, what about the NTU? Yes, we do also have a, a good uh, MOU with the NTU. And uh, thanks to our former president and also chief of staff, uh, Professor Nam Jun Jo, many others, they came to Korea. What we can expect from Asian Research Network activities, uh, those are following. Yes, like uh, Erasmus or Campus Asia, but the non-government, civilian based non-profit organization, this Asian Research Network. It is kind of like a global borderless factual organization. We can secure more talented R&D researchers in science and also Maybe also we are boosting them for translation, their knowledge and R&D product for commercialization, maybe in the future, and also for their own, like a native country, the mother countries. So, and also we can share excellent facilities and also knowledge for sharing. Uh, for opening headquarters of uh, Asia Research Network in Seoul, yeah, it was a 2008, 2008, July 1st, we had a great 
opening ceremony of Prison Tech Center at Hanyang University in Seoul. This is kind of a platform for and also headquarter for the ARN in Seoul. Yeah, this is a location of the ARN and uh, this uh, Fusion Tech Center at Hanyang University campus in Seoul. Uh, one year later, 2009, January, uh, Japanese Prime Minister uh, Asadara came to visit Riken and Hanyang University and Asia Research Network headquarters. We are so happy for hosting him and the delegation uh, from Japan side and many uh, VIPs who are attending is very uh, you know, significant and influential uh, visit by Japanese Prime Minister. Uh, thanks to uh, the former president of AI, uh, the, uh, the NTU and the chief of staff, and also representing uh, Japan and the many Korean side, they opened their regional office at uh, uh, just uh, in the building. There are also offices by Singapore and Japan, and also another company we call, uh, we, we, we have ARN Scanning Pro Microsoft Lab, uh, donated and sponsored by Park System in Korea. Yeah, so Professor Nam Jun Jo and the representatives from uh, Nanyang Technological Universities. Yeah, I like this slide uh, given by Professor Nam Jun Jo, who had presentation just the last year when he came to another very important meeting in Seoul last May. Yes, research and education. So we've been talking about the basic research and many audience who educated in Korea, they learn about facilities and, and also R&D level and learning a lot, especially basic science and research. Some came back to the native countries for contribution themselves, maybe for application or maybe for translation, commercialization, viewpoint, yes. The research, yes, there are applied research, but not yet applied, yes. We also need to look for application because if you think about the knowledge, our knowing is not enough, yeah, we must apply. That's especially uh, Singapore is one, uh, the best example for this. Singapore is not big enough compared to big countries, but uh, people are coming on this herb site and NTU, NUS, many other you know, good universities and uh, institutions, they are doing, yes. So for uh, application, yes, not only willing, yes, we must do. Thanks, Professor Joe, for sharing this. Yes, this is one example, like uh, research excellence and technology, technological enterprise, entrepreneurship by and the startup uh, from you know, youngsters and uh, researcher, whether in private sector, in academia, or national research institutions, yes, all very important. But also com campus, academia, uh, academia, like a national research institute, and the private sector as a triangle multiplex, they should be gathering together. This is one good example uh, on campus. There's NTU as one good example. They are doing very great. Again, coming back to HM Research Network, we, we do have many features, including summer camp uh, since 2012. Yes, Professor Nam Jun Jo organized yeah, this a very wonderful meeting uh, in uh, 2012 as like a, a, a one uh, studying uh, a symposium or summer camp. Yes, we call RU, yeah, on the way to research programs. Yes. Oh, maybe. One of the audience on this meeting, uh, Professor uh, Joshua Chengman, he came to Korea many times. When I was the president of the Korea Nanotech Research Society, he got Grand Prix uh, in poster, you know, uh, presentation, Grand Prix. So now, uh, thanks to Professor Nam Jun Jo and uh, uh, also uh, NTU for their good, you know, the education and also fostering him very well, then he became professor at uh, SKKU Sangyungan University in the Department of Chemical Engineering. 
congratulations, uh, Professor Jackman. And Professor Nam Junji also with me, also we organized several things, yes. So he is one good example for capacity building uh, case. For Asian Research Network Summer Camp also 2013-14 in Hokkaido, I know I'm sorry, Hakone in Japan, in Korea, yes. Also, we, we need to do these kind of special camp now organized by either uh, Asia Research Network or any you know, association or NPO will be very much welcome. Also sponsored or funded by you know, many different resources. Yeah, this is also one good slide and uh, students, uh, researchers, they are attending this at summer camp. Uh, they are concentrating on uh, the, the, uh, you know, the presentation for learning and also you know, adapting themselves, especially how they can, they can develop themselves. Uh, ARN also organizing several conferences, yes, in case of like Asia Nano from 2000, 2000 already 12 years, uh, 20 years, yes. Also, this is one example, 2010, uh, from Japan side, they organized this Asia Nano 2000. Asia Nano 2022 will be held in Busan, Korea. Asia Nano 2024 will be held in Chennai, organized by India Institute of Technology, Matters. The, the ARN also organized another special conference, like a, a frontier, Frontiers of Translation Material and Science, of course, Vietnam and also yes, uh, you know, ACS is it editor in chief. Yes, he also came. Yes, at OIS is very close to him, close to me, uh, almost uh, longer than twenty years. Yes, uh, those are the uh, uh, speakers, and this one has been held at Hanyang University. Uh, not only for conference, also supported by the government. Uh, from Indian government and Korean government, and they are organized uh, six times Indian Korea joint workshops uh, supported by two ministries. Is this is one example of photos? I'm sorry. And then healthcare and also uh, bioenergy robotics. Uh, they've been, you know, they've been organized by ARN depending on the two two ministries of. Uh, of the government. Uh, we are very much proud of hosting and organizing uh, like a, a science ethical innovation forum. In the beginning of 2000, uh, 2014, a uh, Minister of Science and Technology of Korean government uh, contact ARN to organize this uh, Korea ASEAN uh, STL forum as a part of, uh, part of uh, one big event for Korea ASEAN Summit in 2014. So I organized as a chair and uh, including uh, 16 countries, 15 countries. Uh, those are ASEAN countries and many other uh, different countries, including Korea, including uh, Japan, uh, also India and Korea. There are many uh, you know, representatives from ASEAN country and also we, uh, have not only presentation, but also in second day round the table meeting to make a recommendation for the economics for the country. Uh, for examples, according to this recommendation, STI development capacity building, you know very well already, yes, about you know ASEAN and Korea, how we can do implementing this design strategy. And uh, many audiences came to Korea or Singapore, other countries uh, by fellowship, we call prestigious scholarship. Yes, will be very, very important for attracting or supporting the young talent to acquire knowledge and skill from, you know, like Korea, ASEAN partner countries. The mission research consortia is also important. Yes, relevant ministry should develop the appropriate mechanisms to facilitate efficient and effective implementation of proposed initiative. I hope Korean government and the Singapore government and many other countries may put together for uh, this you know, uh, very wonderful you know, recommendation to be implemented. 
For ASEAN networking friendship, they are quite you know, significant and uh, influential to not only student and researcher, but also policymaker and the government. And those are representative, especially Jakarta, the ASEAN, uh, ASEAN Secretariat, and there are also many others from uh, different countries. But the networking actually sometimes, uh, not only presentation, but also sometimes, you know, uh, physical contact, having, you know, good dinner, sometimes drinking. I'm very sorry for not, sorry for showing this, for not drinking at all. But what I might, what I, what I'm talking about is to, to tell you is networking, sometimes physically, but sometimes more friendly through many different ways. Uh, is an forum again? Yes, is an forum? Yes, uh, we've been talking as the STI forum. So continuously 2015 organized by ARN. This one was held my university, Hanyang universities. Yes, like this also the minister from Thailand also kindly attended. Yeah, thanks, uh, the, the honorable ministers came to uh, this uh, STI forum 2015. 2016 organized by, again, uh, together with Chinese Academy Sciences. And this meeting was held in Beijing, supported by Chinese Academy Sciences. For 2017, again, by ARN, in, the, in this case, in this time, agenda is Asian Innovation Strategy for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, Session 1, Talent Mobility, Small Factory, Hyperconnected Society, Session 2, Challenges for Transformation and Innovation Leadership. Professor Lam again came as Chief of Staff and Vice President of uh, NTU. Yes, thanks. Uh, good event and uh, uh, hosting by ARN. Yeah, this is a symbol of like, you know, like uh, gathering hands by hand to hand, yes, or it's arm, arm to arm, yes, yes. Uh, this kind of, you know, you know, connection, as I showed you in you know, one slide, connectivity. Are you physically connected? Are you on the line of the, the connected, you know, platform? Are you the gate or opening the gate? For the connectivity. Let's think about yourself. Where I am. Uh, the air and also a um, great contribution to uh, Asian society, especially Japan, Korea, like a trilateral ST cooperation, especially dialogue at conference and forum. So this was organized by Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat. This one is, it is uh, one secretariat organized and uh, supported by three countries, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, agreed by the government. So again, the TCS has great, you know, reason to support like a trilateral cooperation in case of, in our, in our case, the nanotechnology, because I has been a, I, I've been a, I have been a, like a representative person as a head and also the kind of the, how to say, one, one of a, a key person representing Korean Antigua Society. The purpose of this CJK, China Zephyr Korea, China's Joint Cooperation Nanotech, is to set the framework for establishing close corporate ties like connectivity with a view to furthering each organization's development and to strengthening the close relationship and advancement in nanoscience technology globally, benefiting Asian society at large. Yes, connectivity from brain mobility is becoming more a high level connectivity and more specifically globally and locally, and also uh, different pillar in very different specific 
SNT areas. Co cooperation, yeah, there are many areas to, in, for cooperation because Korea and Japan are leading countries, especially IT area, like a fabrication facility are very excellent. Of course, other country too, but uh, in Asia, yeah, Japan and Korea, yeah, we during last about 30 years experience, Korea and Japan are leading country for semiconductors. Of course, Taiwan these days and China also, they are doing very good. Yes. So promotion of bilateral, bilateral R&D programs also quite essential for the future. Uh, institutional, like you, human networking. Yes, let's do together. For uh, uh, you know, you know, tech, yeah, of course, government level, like uh, agreement is essential in the beginning as an initiative to go begin with. Yes, and then for that, there are many uh, meetings behind or before. Yes, like uh, from concept was 2000, was, was came out 2014, and then uh, we had a meeting in 2015. Uh, you know, first time together in September in China Academy Sciences, the president representing China, me representing Korea, Professor Kawai representing uh, Japan. Yes, we been, we had very wonderful talk, and uh, following this meeting and continuously many meetings, many meetings. Yes, uh, even 2015 Beijing and also uh, Korea 2016, and also. Uh, 2018, 2018, uh, I think 2000, uh, 2000, yes, uh, 19, I'm sorry, 2019, I'm sorry, last year, yes. Uh, we had also another preparatory meeting for a trilateral na na nanotech cooperation initiative. So he, as I said, he is the present, current president of Chinese Academy Sciences. Yes, so Japan, Korea, China, yeah, we are gathering together you know, for many, many years. I'm just giving one example of Minotech cooperation for business. So these things could be expanded in different area, different you know, sciences and technology field. Of course, including mobility or sharing the information, even later on or government and government. I'm not talking about the politics, but you know, as a scientist, you know, it will be quite essential to be influenced or to be influential to other people in different communities. Again, coming back to nanotech, I was talking about trilateral. What about the global visions, global directors forum in nanotech? This was held 2019 every two years in health in Beijing. Yes, uh, here, yes, I am here, yes. So we've been, we talk a lot about how we can cooperate first on nanotech, for nanotech networking, not only networking, but kind of, you know, more uh, formally organized platform or forum. For that, uh, I gave a talk. This is one uh, example of slide when I made a presentation at that uh, meeting, yes. So I just give one example as a trilateral joint cooperation on nanotech. Might be this is one uh, one showcase or expansion. Also, I show this slide too. So the CJK cooperation on nanotech, we can expect many good things. Yes, like a strategic R and D network with a global concept, collaboration. Promotion of in, in, the, 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 like uh, integrate collaborative research and many other things that yeah, we can do together. Yes, suggestions. Yes. So with this uh, slide, I already mentioned CJK, trilateral anti cooperation. Yeah, take this brief of, you know, cooperation idea. This platform leader, platform can be becoming as another uh, bigger platform for ASEAN or for including ASEAN country to become global lateral. The talent mobility in global scale from three country 
to expansion to ASEAN country and also global regional interaction but like uh, you know, Erasmus Plus, uh, Campus Asia, or there are many you know uh, great programs supported by uh, non-profit organization. Hopefully, as a research network representing uh, not not, uh, not as a big one at this moment, but uh, in the near future, a better platform because we already have been doing this for since 2003 with Ricken and officially almost. 15 years, yes. The global nanotech platform or global science and technology network platform, yes, we can do initiation together. But one thing in the near future, there is another Alliance of International Science Organization in China, and there was the vision was very similar to like us, like a capacity building and the UN SDGs. Hopefully, uh, we can have some partnership in the near future to go together, not only with ANSO, but also many other different nonprofit organizations for promoting good things for the world. Uh, let me give you just a few slides, uh, just the same photos. So the Chinese, I'm sorry, uh, Japanese and Koreans, uh, we had a meeting in Korea several years ago. Also, there are uh, several you know, meetings in India, IIT Madras and the Pune, and also you know, this one is the NCL National Chemical Laboratory, and also the, in the uh, New Delhi with a government policymaker and ambassador came, and we had a, a great meeting for a you know, kind of partnership discussion. Uh, in Israel, yes. I am representing Korean Nanotech Societies and at the Baila University in Tel Aviv just a few years ago, yes, and Saudi Arabia. And he he was the Director General of Ministry of Education, yeah, with many other uh, big and good guys and uh, traveling Saudi Arabia for visiting uh, five institutions for looking for partnership between Korea and uh, Saudi Arabia and also many things. So the conclusions might be following like this. Talent mobility in Asia, I already showed you and I was emphasized importance and the future for, for envisioning uh, the ability of a talent person uh, for contributing themselves for their country and also the partners in a partners of countries and of the world. The trilateral energy cooperation is a one showcase and there's a one good model as for showing platform leadership by three countries in many science and technology. Hopefully the government, three government, they've been working together, take this kind of model case. STI Innovation Network, yes, innovation, it is essential and uh, each institution, country, and uh, private sector, even personal, yes, we must be involved in various ways of innovation. So hopefully global STI contribution by ARN and together with uh, a person in Singapore, a Korean community and many other persons who've been educated in Korea or educated in different country. Why not? Let's stay together. Yes, for Asian community as well as other foreign communities. Human centric business model innovation from R&D level output it has to be translated. Yes, this is a technical innovation. Yes, yes, from the output of R&D. Human resource development has to be included very well, like talent mobility, because we need talented person or knowledge person or the manpower. Each one country cannot live by alone. Yes, we must work together. We must do together for all of us, hopefully. If not easy, for your country first. 
Leading role is a global player in advancing cooperation, sustainable economic growth, and uh, uh, like cultural development. We can be together with Korea because many of these things you've been educated, you've been, you've been, you know, stayed in Korea. So Korea, maybe one good example, not maybe, is a really good example. Yes. So I was grown when Korea was just very poor. I was born in 1954, after Korean War ceased in 1953, and left. I am just one good example, like a normal person's example. Yes, education important, with global view, global thinking, global road, learning, and also making partner and a good connectivity, coming back to mother country, think about what I can contribute, what I can do for the countries. I think the message is quite, quite important to you and also to others. I came back to Korea in 1988, 32 years ago from the US. And then I've been spending a lot of time, not only, not only in science, but also many other things, including global matters. Hopefully, I can do something as long as my spirit and my physical manpower and mental power is still alive. Finally, I'd like to thank the audience for uh, your participation to this special session. I deeply appreciate Professor Nam Jun Jo and uh, the organizers and also speakers, audience for looking global partnership. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. <laughs>